Hey guys, uh, this is the last checkpoint of the 1.4 section. We're talking about integration formulas and the net change theorem. With this question, one of the things with this one is to recognize the conversation between an even function and an odd function, and some of the techniques that happen because of that. Even functions, by the way, they're exponent of the, of the highest degree, and there's some other like restrictions on it, but just, just in general, uh, to get you on the, on the right idea, an even function, uh, the highest exponent is likely even. There might be another extra stringent condition on there that also requires it, for example, like where you make the things negative and, and point being. Um, because the function that we're looking at right now, x to the fourth, is exactly a nice even, it almost looks like a, like a parabola, but it's not quite. It also is worth noting that if x to the fourth is even, then x to the fifth is odd. And some of the things that we're gonna do with x to the fourth being even kind of counterintuitively, not counterintuitively, uh, are counteracted like in reverse of our conclusions for an odd function. Here we have x to the fourth. We want to integrate the function x to the fourth from negative, yeah, x to the fourth. May the fourth be with you. Uh, integrate the function x to the fourth from negative two to two. So we can directly use fundamental theorem of calculus. Fundamental theorem of calculus says that is a basic parent function. All x to the fourth functions look like this in some fashion. There might be like a scalar constant multiplied to the front, but we don't have to worry about that. We're just using the properties of integration with something to the fourth power. Add one, make the new fraction, new uh, exponent, the denominator of of fractions, because there's like a one right there, and I guess technically there's a one right there too. But we're gonna integrate from negative two to two. So all we really need to do is just plug in, use fundamental theorem of calculus part two. So that would be two to the fifth minus one over five times negative two to the, to the fifth. Uh, because we have a negative number, and that negative number is to a, an odd exponent, this is gonna result in a negative answer. I happen to know two to the fifth is 32. You should know your powers of two. So I have 32 over five minus negative 32 over five, and I'm highlighting the fact that it's negative to let you know, add them together. It's almost as if we could have just doubled the first one, 64 over five. In fact, that's the idea behind an odd function. When it's symmetrically balanced around the y-axis like they are, and you're integrating from an interval, from a boundary on a number that is evenly matched on the other side, then there's a symmetry to the problem and there's a symmetry to the integral that's created. So I guess technically, the way that we could have also approached this might have been even a little bit easier if we needed to consider, you know, how heavily we have to rely on, tech, on technology to get this answer. That this could be two, the integral from zero to two. We're just gonna double the right half of the graph. Because if the, if the left half of the graph matches the right half of the graph, then why not just calculate only the right half of the graph, which would once again give us two times one-fifth x to the fifth from zero to two, which is two times 32 over five, which is 64 over five. As you see, doubling a nice even function or just working the whole thing out, we still get to the same answer. Take your pick. Thanks for watching this video.